Stephen Merchant. Oh, keep it going. coming out um, this evening in this cold weather. Uh, I've come all the way from London, so let's be honest, you didn't really lift a finger, but uh, <laughs> thank you anyway. Thank you very much for being here. Um, first of all, as a wrestling fan, I want to thank you for making a movie that uh, doesn't make fun of wrestling. It doesn't make fun of wrestling fans and shows it in the light that it deserves. Well, that's uh, nice of you to say, and I appreciate that. I, I wasn't a wrestling fan when I started the project. I didn't know anything about wrestling. I hadn't uh, ever seen it uh, or watched it. Um, British wrestling in the 1970s, when I was growing up, was on TV, but was very was not as athletic or as exciting as American wrestling. It was just tall, fat men <laughs> bumping bellies for uh, <laughs> half an hour, and that was really popular in England in the 70s because we had very low... Uh, expectations and um, and so I didn't know anything about it um, and then Dwayne Johnson saw the documentary that was on British TV he saw some clips of and um, he ended up becoming involved in their lives that scene where he tells her that she's gonna go on was, was something that happened in real life and I guess somewhere on the line he realized that there was a sort of movie in there it seems appropriate that we're in Philadelphia because I think he spotted there was a kind of rocky underdog story you know there uh, but but a real one Speaking of which, you, you ran the Rocky Steps today, I noticed. I did run the Rocky Steps today. It seemed only appropriate as I'm here that I do that. Uh, I can't imagine any other tourist has ever done that no. before. <laughs> no, no. Um, this is, while it's fresh in my mind, and especially for the wrestling fans, uh, Zelina Vega does a spot on AJ Lee yes. in this movie. It's like perfect. Yes. You know? Wrestling fans, yes? Okay, yeah. <laughs> little, the little nerd moment there, sorry. Um, how closely did you work with Paige and her family when actually writing the script for this movie? Well, I got sent the documentary, and like I said, I wasn't terribly interested in wrestling, but I watched it and I um, sort of immediately fell in love with them, really, and, and their, uh, their passion for this thing, and the way they talk about it as having rescued them from dark times. They talk about it like it's a religion. Um, and... Um, I was just, I thought there was something about that relationship between the brother and sister that, that was really moving and that idea of, of what happens when you get left behind and how do you pick up the pieces again, right? If you, from a young age, have always assumed you'd be the one that would be the star and, and you're not. And I thought that was a very uh, relatable and touching story. I went to meet the family. Um, they were as, eccent as eccentric and funny and warm and weird and mad as you, as you imagine. Um, Paige I didn't meet until later, I spoke to her a lot on the phone, and they gave me their version of the story, and of course, I didn't want it to simply be, you know, that, that I just type out what they said happened, so I tried to sort of dig around the edges, and I went to WWE, I went to Florida, I met with the trainers, you know, and I tried to get their take on her, and for instance, Paige presented herself to me as, oh, I went to America, and I felt very bullied, and I was this outsider, and then you'd speak to the other trainers, and they were like, well, sure, but sometimes she was the bully, you know, and so I tried to give that, that, two, that two sides to that sort of story. Was there anything about the world of professional wrestling that surprised you once you really started digging in to the whole, whole thing? Well, I, I don't know if this was a surprise, but it was certainly uh, eye-opening to see the sheer uh, passion and level of skill which the, which the wrestlers uh, put into it. They, they, you know, it's very hard, particularly with the WWE, it's particularly hard to get signed, as Zack Stroy attests. Um, it's, they, they, they have to go through the machine, you know, a lot, thousands apply, only a few get selected, even fewer make it all the way up the ranks. Um, and, and it's quite a unique combination, obviously, as you know, as a fan, of, of sort of stunt work and choreography and showmanship and performance. Uh, it's just, it's, a, it's an unusual blend of all those things. And it wasn't until I went to some wrestling matches, including WrestleMania with Dwayne, uh, no big deal, um, <laughs> that, uh, that I really sort of saw kind of how thrilling it was, really, and uh, we had to meet Vince McMahon, you know, the, the, the big cheese of um, wrestling, and he, it was midnight, the night before WrestleMania, and um, we got introduced to Vince, and he was, it was midnight, and he's, what is he, 78 or something, and he was just eating a stick at midnight. <laughs> Just a, f a full bloody rare steak, no vegetables, nothing, no fries, just steak at midnight. And uh, and, he, and they said, oh, we want to make a film about Paige. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and 
and um, and um, you have to stand aside. I'm not joking. When he walks down the corridor, everyone gets pushed aside like Darth Vader is coming. Um, that and, doesn't surprise any wrestling no, right, fan. Right. Um, and so, uh, so I, I've become a fan in the course of making the movie. Definitely. What's so interesting? It doesn't have any particular reputation. It's best known as the home of a fictional character played by Steve Coogan called Alan Partridge. For some reason, why I've seen that's its reputation. And I think it was chosen by them because it is so anonymous and so sort of. You know, it's sort of, it, it, it has a cathedral, and um, it's, it's actually quite pretty, some of it, but it's a very anonymous place. No one, you don't hear people going, if I can make it to Norwich, I'd have made it. You know, it's not, it, so it's pretty much, but a lot of the, the idea, the jokes about it being a backwater and full of inbred people, that was mainly Vince Vaughn improvising. <laughs> I didn't write those lines, that was him just making that stuff up. Um, uh, in, in, in terms of her being relatively green, the reality is that the, the, the climb was a little more gradual because the NXT uh, sort of allows people to, to bed in a little bit longer. And in early versions of the script, you know, I tried to cover that part of the story, but it was just so boring because, you, you know, it's just, I don't, I'm not a fan of movies where it says six weeks later, <laughs> eight months later, you know, and, and sort of, and you've got to see passage of time you got to see like you know her trudging through the snow and then her in a bikini to know that the day the months are passing you know and so i just felt like the experience for her was sort of it was very hard and it was and it was tough and she was away and she was alone and the crowd didn't connect with her initially and she had to work hard to win them over and i tried to hit all of those moments just in reality they were a bit more spread out so by the time she got there she was at least um she, I think she probably, you probably tell me more than, but she kind of had some kind of following. You know? She was also NXT Women's Champion. Oh, right. Okay. Before. Yeah. Which oh, kind of, are you nerd? Which I, yeah. <laughs> no, no lie. Yeah. Which yeah. would have then taken away from that final moment of her winning the title if you showed her winning right. the title twice. Right, right. How many times can you see her winning titles, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> big old nerd moment here. Uh, thank you again.